Hi, Margaret. Hi, Amelia. How are you? I'm great. And I'm largely great because of you and your help. Margaret has been helping me for days put this together. Why not? A couple of days. And it's been longer. We've been doing tests and, and the, the people who are, who are appearing in the festival. And Margaret's mom actually started the festival off last night. <laughs> meditative flute session that was that was amazing he said I was so relaxed I mean I guess it was kind of good but I, you know it was midnight I was like oh now I get to sleep you know no, <laughs> you're like no I got 24 hours of yeah. it <laughs> but it was really nice so all in the family welcome Margaret Margaret's also a very good friend of mine for have been friends for many years how's Madrid um, Madrid is good. It's really crazy. We've been on lockdown. That's some very fancy pasta. Um, we've been on lockdown for about a week. Uh, so everybody's been at home. It's been super crazy. I, um, I decided to stay inside starting last Thursday. So I guess I'm at like day eight or nine now. And it's really crazy. Um, basically our days are like hanging out at home and at 8 p.m everyone goes out onto their balconies and claps for the public health workers who mm -hmm. are hard at work. And then it's sort of been incorporated into everybody who is helping out. So it's um, clapping for people who work in pharmacies, clapping for the people who are in the supermarkets, clapping for people who work in distribution centers. This whole idea there is this network of people who um, don't have the luxury of staying at home. And so we need to thank them as much as the public health workers. So the highlight of my day is every day at eight, we go out <laughs> onto the balcony and clap. Um, but yeah, I've been in home. I've been you really cooking. haven't been outside at all. I went out, I've been to the supermarket once. Mm -hmm. um, Carlos, my boyfriend and I are kind of taking off going to the supermarket, but going out as little as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's totally nuts. Um, yeah, so I've left the house one time in the last week. And it's really funny, we've decided to use the entryway to our very small apartment as uh, like a pantry since we're not used we don't use the doors anymore so we basically turned the entry hallway uh, into our um, our pantry so is we have more space to store all the stuff is? what is that where all the toilet paper is no we're not hoarding toilet paper I think that that's crazy um, no we have just the we have just the normal correct amount of toilet paper in the house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's all kinds of crazy stuff um, but yeah, it's been really nuts. And um, it's like particularly hard because I work in tourism. And mm -hmm. so everything, you know, like anybody else who works in any business that has uh, a look towards the public has been completely canceled. And yeah. the scary part of tourism is we just don't know when it's going to start back up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like I was talking to a friend of mine who owns restaurants this morning and I was saying, well, you know, like, this is going to be bad for you guys, you know, but it's a month or however long it's going to be three weeks, six weeks. But then, you know, the day you open is the day you start selling food. And for tourism, we just don't know when people are going to get back on airplanes and come and visit. So yeah. it's pretty scary, but I just am feeling relaxed because we're all in the same boat and we just got to get through this. And, and that's what we have to do. Well, I guess that's yeah. a, that's a, a good way. I mean, they were really the only way of thinking about it. Yeah, we don't, there's kind of no other option, you know, and I definitely, I've seen a lot of people who work in tourism kind of take the like, uh, <laughs> eat your food. Nobody expects you to not eat for 24 hours. You're a musician, not a camel. Um, there's no reason to be worried about that. We could do, I have a, I have a question for you and the world. The A ASMR, ASMR, do you pronounce it ASMR or ASMR? What are you talking about? Is this that quiet thing? Yeah, it's wow. <laughs> the quiet thing. I don't know how you say it. I've never said it out loud. Well, you're not supposed to. <laughs> when I was saying you could like eat pot, you could like. Oh. Yeah, didn't I? Mm. I could put on some John Cage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's disgusting. It's totally disgusting, but I don't, my question still remains, is it ASMR or asthma? It has to be ASMR. You know what it is? I'll tell you, in my, oh my. my completely um, uneducated, well, mm -hmm. not uneducated, I'm making a very educated guess okay. based on years of foundational perception. Okay. 
ASMR is an acronym for something. Yeah. And it used to be the four words, and then it right. became ASMR, and then that's too much, so people say asthma. Asthma. So that's what happened. I don't know. That's what I assume. We'll have to. I'll. I'll do some research about that later. Um, the other important part of research that I heard was that um, those stories that there's like dolphins in the canals in um, Venice, I heard that that was fake news. Have you heard anything about that? If it's fake news, it's going to break my heart further. I just assumed that it was fake news. Because oh, see, photo, I totally got on board on the that. The photo of the dolphin was very much SeaWorld. The dolphin was, it was clean. I mean, just the thing that I saw on the, you know, scrolling. Mm -hmm. It was a clean dolphin and it's shiny and you know, it looked like it just stepped out of a salon. A salon it dolphin? It didn't look like an angry, I mean, if you were a dolphin in Venice, you would not look like Kate Blanchett. You would be very confused. Or you wouldn't because the world had stopped and so there's like a normal flow of water and so you would have just like, you've just been like chilling like a dolphin. But then you, would you have been the first dolphin that they caught on camera, no. The first one they're gonna get is the confused dolphin. Because they're like, why, whoa, the dolphin. How'd I get here? Whoa, yeah. Not I the dolphin, like, yeah, this is completely normal, doing the backstroke, you know. <laughs> Did you move your gondola? I don't know that dolphins do the backstroke. I think dolphins only do dolphin. You asked my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I'm rejecting your opinion. I am delirious. I've been up for it since eight o'clock yesterday morning. I want my dolphin to do the backstroke. Okay, fine. Your dolphin can do the backstroke, and then it can they can all like throw little balls at each other <laughs> no. with their little backward dolphin nose. No, 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 no. Those are only, those are only circus dolphins who do that. Circus dolphins. <laughs> You're breaking my heart, Amelia. You're ruining everything. You're ruining everything. Fake news. That's my point. <laughs> Fake news. Um, cool. A friend so, of mine taught her nephew to say fake news. And so anytime he doesn't like something, he says fake news. I like that. Yeah, it's I, really funny. I think I'm going to apply that in, you know, like, you have to pay your taxes. Fake news. Yeah, he did, he'll be, they'll be like, um, no, it's really, it's time for bed. And he's like, fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious. How old is he? Uh, you, you've armed that kid. Kid is armed. How old is he? Um, he's seven, so he thinks it's like really funny. Yeah, it's it's kind of not. It, he's too old for it. To be cute. It's not as cute as it would be if he was like three and someone was like, "Here's your water," and he's like, "Fake news!" But it's it's trickier because he's older, and so he like knows when to. This is fake news. Fake yeah. news. He like knows when to get it in there. All right, maybe I'd have to see it firsthand. Very funny. So speaking of tourism, talk to us. Tell us what it is that is your tourism business. Well, that's a great question, Amelia. Thank you so much for asking. Fake news. Um, no, I'm just joking. Not fake. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do asthma or pasta eating. <laughs> no. I don't even know what it, it's supposed to be like. Oh. Well, you're probably offending all sorts of set. Oh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anyone. I, I don't actually know enough about it to have an opinion. You're right. I should be more sensitive to our to our hearing sensitive friends. Um, so I have a food tour business and it's really great. And um, I do neighborhood food tours in Madrid and help people learn all about Spanish food and drinks and how to order stuff. And like, you know, having lived here that the whole like tapas world can be a little bit overwhelming for people when you first get started because you don't know where to go or what to eat. And like some bars seem too cool to go into because there's a bunch of people standing there and you don't know like what to order or how to order. Um, and so I made uh, these food tours where we go to different bars and everything's kind of pre-organized. So when you walk in, there's a lot of magic. People are waiting for us with, you know, right. wine glasses on the bar. Uh, food's already ordered. So as soon as we walk in, food starts to come out. Mm. Um, and so the idea is to give people the sense of even if you just showed up in Madrid, you get to go out on a totally locals night out with all this really amazing food and get, you know, all the wine pairing advice from the bar owners and the breakdown of, you know, when you look at a menu, what you should order. And, and so it's really fun. And the amazing thing is I started the business a year ago 
And uh, about a month ago before all of this craziness transpired, I was looking at, you know, having my best month yet, tons of tours in April, tons of tours now in March, everything's been canceled, but um, I know that at some point it's going to come back, but it's been, it's been like a really amazing journey to sort of start the business and then, you know, get to really feature all of the bar owners and small stores. And I go and do a market tour in the morning. And so getting to share all these people's businesses that I really love with all of the people who come to visit Madrid. So it's been great. And, you know, I'm just hoping that once people start to travel again, they'll come back and we'll get to go back to, to normal-ish or whatever oh, yeah. normal is going to be. Definitely. As yeah. a, our, our, I think we, I mean, we're going to see what happens with the rest of the day, but I mm -hmm. think if we were to hold elections right now for the quarantined festival philosopher, mm -hmm. it would go to Svarbar. Okay. Svarbar. Uh-huh. Uh, who gave us about love and aggressive love, alpha male love. love. Whoa. But yesterday, earlier yesterday, he was telling me, you know, it's it, we're losing all of this money, but it's just money. You know, money does indeed grow on trees. You have to remember that. It's made of paper. <laughs> it's made of paper. Money does indeed grow on trees. It's only paper. It's true. I mean, I don't know that I'm going to agree with that. It's it's the, the, the tree part I'm going to go with. Um, yes, I personally am trying to be philosophical about it. Um, I would like to be more philosophical about it, but it is, <coughs> it's a moment. Yeah, it's definitely a moment. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an exciting, you know, it's also exciting to think about having a bunch of extra time to do stuff, which that's the thing that I'm trying to think about is that, you know, we are always go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And to be forced to kind of quiet down does yeah. feel like, like if you can relax and like lean into it seems like a good feeling um, and to be able to reflect is really fun. Um, but I have a question for you. I was thinking we could do a little, since no one can travel, that we could do a little armchair travel. And so I was thinking, obviously my armchair travel, travel fantasy is Spain always. Um, so I know that I met you years ago, but I wanted to know what was the first place you visited in Spain and what did you, what did you think about it? Um, the first place I visited, so not Madrid. Like I, okay. No, the first time you, you touched down in Spain, oh. um, where did you go and what did you think? I arrived by train. Mm -hmm. It was in the month of June, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I'd taken this long train from the south of France. It took me something like 11 hours, you know, one of these slow trains with the yeah. that they have to build in front of the train as it's moving. Uh -huh. And so I got to um, Atocha, if, or, or what's the one in the north? Uh, San Martin is yeah. the train station in the north of Madrid. I got there at midnight, and it was something awful, like 29 degrees. Uh huh. And I was just like, what is this? <laughs> well, how is it so hot? Oh, the moon is out and it's just, you're just sweating. And, mm -hmm. and then I, um, I went to my friend's house and dropped my stuff and he said, we can't, we can't possibly go to bed. It's too hot. So we had to go outside for a walk. And there were all of these children, toddlers playing in the playground at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, I love summer in Madrid. What this place is because these children need to be warm, you know, and, uh, and just realize, well, no one has air conditioning, and this is just how life is. And being really um, shocked in a way, because of course, my first, you know, I am from the consumer land where if I want something, just buy it and have it. And why do you just have air conditioning? It's stupid that everyone's suffering. But I remember thinking how surreal and nice it was that there were all of these children who were safe. I mean, their parents were there, but you know, at one o'clock in the morning in downtown Madrid, children just on swings, you know? Yeah. So that was really, that was, I, I just remember that and thinking, what, this place is weird. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> That's a great story. I mean, summer in Spain is so crazy. Summer in Madrid is so crazy. And and like the combination of how it's like so hot at night, 
the light situation where it doesn't get dark until like 10 30 at night just how everyone's out and like and there's no rules you can like wear whatever you want you can do whatever you want it's just total a total hot dry free for all you feel like a hair dryer just blowing on you and everyone can just do it you just go crazy but every but there's also this level of energy i think which is maybe that was another part of the thing that was shocking about the, the school children is mm-hmm. that you know when it's hot like that in the states you're in a slow place you know yeah. you're out and people move slower and they talk slower and things don't happen quickly you know and, and body language is very syrupy you know? mm-hmm. and in madrid Everybody's going, blah, 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 blah. they're still talking like that. The noise is still there. The ruido and the, and the you know, like how, how is this even, like, it's way too hot to be talking that quickly. That's so funny. Yeah, it's like, it's like everyone goes into the, goes into just summer mode where it's like, you're just hot. <laughs> and oftentimes I think to myself, like, am I the only one who's hot? You know, like, is everyone so hot? Because people seem so exactly you see, like people seem fine, and I see people like all dressed up, and I'm like, "How are you okay? Like I'm not okay, you know." I mean, they'll talk about it because it's small talk, and that's what you talk about. Oh, how hot yeah. it is! They don't seem they don't seem particularly bothered. I always feel like I'm more bothered, and I'm way better after all these years. Like I finally feel in the last couple of years where I'm like, summer comes, and I'm like, "Oh, but like hit me with your best summer," you know? Like I can do this now. So like walk around, be cool, keep my hair done. I'm fine. I'm like I'm. You just do do what you have to do to me, Madrid summer. I'm ready for you. I got my I got my wedge espadrilles. I'm ready for you. I think you know my. It's that's a great first Spain memory. My first Spain memory was I came to to Granada um, in 2000 to study abroad, and my my first 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 Spain memory like getting off the airplane. My first five seconds in Spain essentially where I got off the airplane, maybe not five seconds, maybe 15 minutes. I got off the airplane and I was in the airport in Barajas in Madrid. And the first thing I really focused my attention on was I was looking for my transfer plane because I was going to go from, I had flown into Madrid and then I, I didn't even realize how you got to Granada. So like my parents travel agent in 2000 had booked me on a flight to Granada. So I was, I, I was going to get on this like teeny tiny plane. So I had to find this teeny tiny plane in the airport. Um, and so I found kind of the area where the plane was gonna be. And I look over and there was this giant sign on a wall. This was 2000, things have changed a little bit, but there was a giant sign on the wall that said no fumar, so no smoking. And uh-huh. there was a group of maybe five businessmen in their suits just standing smoking right, un- right under the sign. I was yeah. like, oh, I've, I've waited so long to be here. <laughs> this, is, this is what I want, you know? Well- because it was, it was uh, just sheer. I just uh, loved, I just loved how I was like, like a different connection to the rules. Like it just, I was like, yeah, Europe, man. <laughs> you, they tell you not to smoke. You, I, I don't even smoke, but I was like, I just, this is cool. Um, you can't really do that anymore. They'll, they'll definitely get, what? You ignore it. You just, you, you do whatever you want. Um, you want. And then. I got on this, so I was waiting for my plane to Granada. And then the, um, I met this guy who was also going to Granada, who was from the US. And he had done the same study abroad program that I had done a couple years before. And he was going to visit some friends. And so we're waiting together. And then we had to, there was such a small plane that we had to take a little mini bus from the gate out to the plane across the tarmac. So I was talking to him and we're on the little bus and then he runs into a friend of his who had worked at the language school. And wow. so he says hello to her. And then he introduces me to her. Now, I had not heard about the Spanish two kisses. So I'm standing on this little bus. Um, you know, I've been traveling since Seattle. You know, like I've been on a plane for like hours and hours and hours. I have my little backpack um, at my feet. And uh, this woman, you know, goes in to do the two greeting kisses. And I was like so surprised by this woman's like face coming towards me that I jumped back. And as I jumped back, um, I tripped on my backpack. The bus was moving and I fell. And like the whole bus starts laughing. And they're like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Like, you didn't know about the Spanish kisses. And I was like, I didn't know about these kisses. 
And she was like, all right, let me, and this, so then the entire bus explains to me the kisses system. The woman like, it's like, all right, when you meet new people, you have to do the kisses and this is how we do it. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. She's like, don't worry, strangers aren't going to try and mouth kiss you. And I was like, okay, cool. Okay, cool. She's like, you're just, these are the, these are the greeting kisses. So then I practiced the greeting kisses and I like practiced the greeting kisses with everyone on the bus. So we could all like learn how to do it. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. People are crazy. Um, but it was great. I loved it. And so, so you know, it's just it's kind of a, it's been a wild ride since then. But those two things like really, really mean Spain, mean Spain to me. Yeah. Well, and well, you haven't, you hadn't even gotten to Granada yet. That was just at the, at the airport. But yeah. That was just within like an hour of landing in the country. That was like not even leaving me. I hadn't even left the airport yet. And all that stuff happened. Yeah. Oh, and then I did yeah. my... You know, my school year in Granada was totally amazing. And um, man, I was, it was such an incredible experience. And I just, you know, I learned so much and I really didn't eat for the first couple of days except the almonds and like granola bars that my mom has pa had packed for me because it was still the pesetas. And so I couldn't figure out, like I couldn't figure out how much food cost or what I was supposed to eat and how I was supposed to eat. And so that's like a really important part of my tours now is to explain like the timetable because Spanish food timetable is so crazy. You don't eat lunch. Restaurants don't open for lunch until like two. So I yeah. couldn't figure out how I was supposed to get my lunch, what this money meant. I mean, thankfully now there's the euro, which is pretty much, you know, one-to-one, -one, well, depending on the time of year. Well, yeah. it can go a little bit, but it's not, a, it's not like 250 pesetas to a dollar as it was, or 230 pesetas to the dollar, like it was in 2000. So yeah, it was really stressful to try and get food. Um, but then I figured it out and, uh, and then it was and amazing. What? You said, and you survived. Oh my gosh, I survived. I loved it. I loved every minute. It was so amazing. <laughs> and that I just totally got, I got hooked on that. Like every day can be an adventure. You know, I think that that just sort of changed the trajectory of my life. That if you are just in a new place, that like everything you do, everything you do is an adventure. And I just yeah. felt, I just had that feeling for the first time of like, the combination of being young and being away from home and so you can you feel like you just you have this complete control over what you do and how you do it and then just all of the the people you meet and the it smells different and the food tastes different and you, you don't know what you're going to get when you order and you, you wake up in the morning you don't know what's going to happen at the end of the day and I just I totally I totally fell in love totally hooked 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 from the first from the first day that's so funny yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize. I mean, I, I knew that you had a great time of it, but I didn't realize it was it was the first day. Yeah, it was. You know, I think within, and it's so funny. I I have these crazy dreams about Granada still, and about being Granada is amazing. Everyone, once you're able to go places again, um, go to Granada if you haven't been there. The it's just so beautiful um, and being up in the, the way that Granada has the old part that had been the Moorish quarter kind of up built up onto a hill and so it's kind of terraced houses that go up and up and up and just exploring that and there was a long time also you know the and I'm sure for everybody who traveled before there were smartphones the not having a map was so amazing and how you just you didn't know where you were was a really incredible feeling uh, sometimes I like, even now, just like to turn off my phone so I can have that experience again of being like, well, I don't exactly know where I am. And when I would be exploring those little streets up in the Albicene, you know, for pretty much the first six months that I was there, like I could never remember how I would get someplace. And so it would feel kind of magic when I would wind up in these um, plazas that I couldn't figure out how I would have gotten there because it was just like all yeah. these tiny little windy streets. And that's, that was just such an amazing feeling. Cool. Oh, um, I know. Oh, I've got some, okay, first I've got to pin this. It's a very good idea. How do we pin this? I don't know what that means. Well, somebody's saying that the live stream is getting harder to find. I guess it's moving down the, the page or something. Oh, okay, so pin, okay. I see what you're saying. But I, I, it doesn't give me an option to pin here. I'm, I'm gonna let you handle that. Okay, I will work on that. Um, um, my and, then, and then who's next? Is Amy Joe coming on? 
Amy Jo is coming on in half an hour, I believe. But did you hear me, what I just said? The pennant, what did you just say? I said, my mother says hello. Oh, hi, Donnie, how is your mom doing? Good. That's great, that's fun when your mom would come and visit too. I know, wasn't it? That was so I fun. I was tucking to you, so she's, which means, you know what? She's watching me too. See, I need to see. Let me see if I can find, all right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, videos. Figure out how to do it. Did you figure it out or shall I get to work on this? I did not figure it out. Okay. Um I am okay. This is a live stream, people trying to figure out technology. Yeah, well, you know, the tests were great. I mean, we, we, <laughs> okay. Everything, everything is fine. Okay, hold on one sec. Everything Let's get, everything is going fine. Everything's going amazing. I'm trying to see, we might try to get Bai back in here to answer your question. And if he's not ready, I'm seeing who else is here because we have a couple of drop-ins. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I'm going to see here. I told you both shouldn't be. I did also, I, add, I added Margaret's um, site to the quarantine.com page. So Margaret Sperling is her name. And you can go there and check out Walk Eat Spain. And until it's such a time as we're allowed to move about the cabin again, you can drool over the pictures. And... Um, okay, pin to the top of the page. Can you find it? Yeah, I think that I got that taken care of. Okay. It's just loading. Just noted. Oh yeah. Did you happen to watch Danny? I you didn't. Yeah. Oh, you missed it. All right, it's pinned to the top of the page. It's pinned to the top of the page. Thank you, watch Mill. Danny. That was that was Mill. It it's gonna be huh? It did it? Yeah, it did. It's up there. Yeah, oh, you missed it. No. It's pinned to the top of the page. All right, thank you, Mill, for making that that suggestion. Mill's going to be on a little bit later, seven thirty my time. Cool. And um, let's see here. What was that? Who's coming next? Well, that's what I was trying to tell you. Oh, it might be you. Me, Margaret. Uh huh. We might have another half an hour. Oh, great. Because um, because um, Bai might still be having audio issues. The reason he was. He couldn't get him on before. Okay. How's he doing now? I'm, I'm not hearing anything. So let's just hang out. He's here in the room, but I don't know that he's working. So until I get some confirmation. Now, can we get him on the chat to try and figure out what's going on? That's what I just, yeah, I just chatted. And what did he say? Nothing. And I've also sent him a message. So. Okay. Well, cool. I'm going to knock you in front of my mother again. Well, I'll chew, but I won't put food in my mouth. I'll what if we? Mouth. What if we did like a DJ session? You think we can do that? I think we can. I was thinking that we could, um, if we shared screen. I know I would be like, you know, no one ever lets me be the DJ, so <laughs> I would definitely. I am always kicked off immediately, um, because it's okay. A perfect example of why I'm kicked off the DJ is a couple of years ago, I was sitting at a bar uh, waiting for some friends to come and they were extremely late. So I was sitting at this bar by myself for maybe 25 minutes. And it was this like little Venezuelan bar and they were serving out at bus and stuff near my house. And there was probably like a 25 year old Venezuelan guy as the bartender and he had put on this playlist. And it starts with Beyonce. 
And then the next song is like a Jorge Drexler ballad. And then there was um, some Bob Dylan. And then after that, there was some, I don't, it was maybe like Jay-Z or something. And then the next person who came on was, uh, was Joaquin Sabina. And I was like, I said to this kid, I was like, are you actually me? I was like, this is the weirdest okay. that it seems like maybe you knew I was coming. And he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, Beyonce, Jorge Drexler, Sabina, Jay-Z, and then a whole bunch. I was like, what? Yeah, who is this person? And uh, are you actually me? Um, so, so in keeping with you getting kicked off from DJing, Bye says he's here, so I'm gonna give you one song. Oh my god, I love that. No, I don't I don't want a song. I want bye to sing. Dance. I'm ready to dance. I've had four bites of pasta. Okay, you had four bites of pasta. Okay, give me one second. Let me see what I can get here. Um, I feel like the song to play, and I don't know that Bai is gonna like this is his beginner. Um let's see if I can get a song that I want to play on here. Give me one second. Um, my computer has also been running a tiny bit. Uh, now our computers are going to explode at the end of this. Yeah, let's see what hobble we got. Away together, or hobble away together. Yeah, they'll be like, why have you done this to us? <laughs> this is what I, a friend of mine said that he played this song for his daughter and now it's the only thing she wants to listen to, which I think is so funny. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> it's gasolina. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Just, right. just putting that out there so everyone gets a little, gets the body working. Gets a little, all right, well, that's what it takes. That's she, what it is. Take off the COVID blues. Dame, dame gasolina. I know, I think that the best, the best medicine for, for coronavirus is Daddy Yankee, so. Oh, was that who that was? Uh huh. Now I know. Now I know a Daddy Yankee song. Yeah. I All right. What was it? A Daddy Yankee song. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't be a jerk. Um. <laughs> All right. So that's it. This has been an absolute pleasure, uh, guys. Once we're back to going, as Amelia said, moving freely about the cabin, come see me in Madrid, and uh, I'll uh, be available for any Zoom questions. Woo! Thank you. Woo! Okay, bye. Bye. Have a nice gasolina. Have a nice gasolina. Okay. Bye. Bye.